Sarah Brady is his ex. She's a pro surfer. She's she's made a, a name for herself in her profession and, and in her pursuit of excellence in that context. But but really kind of made a name for herself with, uh, you know, posting these controversial text messages where basically he tells her, you know, that uh, she's violating his boundaries Mm -hmm. by posting photos in bathing suits, by, you know, surfing with other men, that kind of a thing. Um, She's publicly branded him as emotionally abusive. Mm -hmm. Uh, Do you automatically in a situation like this say that is emotional abuse? No. So what I would not do is classify him as a person I don't know him well enough but I can definitively say looking at these text messages they are abusive yes 100% and the tricky thing about it is he's using psychological terms in order to bolster his case right so that's really the confusing part about it but the things he says are you know if you're hanging out with these types of people then you're not for me and he, he you know really degrades her friends her past her Uh, interactions which are part of her job and that is the the problematic piece of this is he's saying but if this is your choice then you're not the person for me right and it's like well this isn't her this is her job this is who she was when you met her I was just gonna say he knew what she did yeah before he met her before he started dating her He uses this as I'm setting boundaries with you, but that's even used in the wrong context because boundaries are what you're going to do. Boundaries are for yourself. What behavior do you want to be around and not be around? That doesn't mean you go blame and shame other people for what they're doing. He can absolutely choose not to be in this relationship, but he doesn't have to blame and shame her. What would have been the right way for him to go about this? Mm -hmm. All he has to do is say, you know what? My own stuff is getting in the way here. I see I need to do more work on this. I'm going to go and do that. But while I'm doing it, I can't be in this relationship with you. And I wish you all the best. That's it, right? It would have just been a nice, simple conversation. Wish you well. Let's shake hands. Part as friends, right? There wouldn't have been news. But number two, had he said that, that would have shown his emotional maturity. And it's just ironic that he also has a Netflix special about his psychiatrist. We know he's in therapy. We know he's getting help. It's an interesting study and I think I appreciate that he put it out. But what this really shows too is that just because you are working on yourself doesn't mean you're perfect. You're still going to make mistakes. You've still got stuff from your childhood, from other relationships that's going to influence you. When you make these mistakes, apologize, make amends. You're going to say things in the heat of the moment you don't mean sometimes because we're human. But then do something about it. Don't continue to force the issue and continue to blame and shame the, the other person. Can a situation like this with, with such a high profile individual have a silver lining in the sense that it kickstarts almost a worldwide, like a mm-hmm. global conversation about boundaries and appropriate relationships? A hundred percent. And that's why I want to use this as a teaching tool. We have to give credit to Jonah for continuing to be in this process of self-discovery. He went into therapy knowing he was not, he was far from perfect and he didn't like the life that he was living. If he makes amends, if he doesn't and continues to, you know, berate Sarah and be mean to her, then that's not okay either. But if this is his opportunity to say, oh my gosh, I really made some mistakes I wasn't aware, there's such redemption and learning in this story. We can all relate to Jonah on some level. We've all been mean to people who we love. And so, you know, let's not take this as a cancel culture moment. Let's take this as a teaching opportunity to say we're all capable of this. Alyssa says, I've been disgusted at how many women online are calling her jealous Mm -hmm. of his marriage and are supporting Jonah Hill. She says women get it together. I don't think she should have put these out there. She's crossing a boundary there, unfortunately, I think. I don't think that that's, that's private information. And What's her motivation for publicly sharing that? Just let the question percolate and, and, and people will, will wonder about that as, as one of, like there's a million things to consider here, right? Yeah.